everyone. Thanks for stopping by, taking the time to check out my work. Now, we are in times where we need truth given to the world. There are asteroids passing between the moon and the earth at very, very close distances, beginning of January. AG 13, we're talking 50% closer to earth and the moon. These asteroids are barreling by without anyone noticing them. I caught one. Luck? Luck, or is it because there are just so many going by that it's not that hard to capture? This object, I consider more of a planetoid, has pipe structures or tunnel structures on it. Very symmetrical. But I'm noticing when I see an asteroid or an object, the spherical ones, I've been noticing always to one end a huge machine on the end of the planet. Now, now look at this one, for example. Just reminds me of a spacecraft. They could be spacecrafts also. Look at the geometrical, look at the symmetrical shape at the back, the symmetrical shapes on the top of this uh, supposed asteroid. W why? Why are we seeing geometrical shapes? They're not all like that. When I find one like this, boy, I'll show it. And this one was beside the moon at the beginning of June or end of May. Talking the, between May 30th and June 3rd. We can see the platform at the bottom here, geometrically shaped. It's there, whether it's a building, whether it be a platform, something, a mechanism. It was built on top of this planet or planetoid or object. Could be a craft. You'd think if an alien species was that advanced, <laughs> Is it that hard to put a throw a couple of craters over top of the, the ship and just have it hover with a bright light far out up in the sky, never being noticed? It's you got to admit it's the perfect plan, costless. Very funny too the fact that they could have gotten away with that, and that now more people are trying to find some truth tunnel at the backside there, and you'll see through this video. There are other objects that I found between the moon and earth. I'm probably up to about 16 or 17 objects entirely in the sky that I've been getting. And, uh, you know, trying to document them, take note of them, their shapes, their sizes, and uh, what, what seems to be on their surfaces, um, whether they're reflective or not. Basically, what science is doing, I'm trying to do it by researching what science is doing itself. I research about science and then with my own work I try to apply a sort of scientific um, attitude if you want proper way to be able to explain also what we are seeing but in reality science is theoretical. That's what I believe. We look all, all around this object and we're seeing uh, structures like this side here. There's the back now to the left turned around and we can see whether it be an engine or a structure or something it's geometrical and it just makes you think like, what the heck is it doing there and why on the outer edge of the planet. Now these planets, these objects that I find, they look flat. I very rarely get something that well, rarely. I have never, I never have gotten anything that looked round. Not spherical, anyways. Round, flat like a cookie or a lens, yeah, but I don't know. This is geometrical. These shapes should not be on these uh, asteroids or celestial objects. They have no business being on there. It means somebody would have had to have landed here and manipulated the surface. Or is it a new thing that geometrical straight burial walls are formed? There's a lot to see on these asteroids and unknown celestial objects. They're all over the place. And for some of them to be buzzing by 
Earth and the Moon without being noticed, there's a problem. You know why? Because science tells us that they're looking so far out that they'll see anything coming. How does an asteroid appear? Because I'm not putting words in anyone's mouth, but this is exactly what's going on. They're making themselves sound like fools by saying that they can see so damn far out into the universe to see any, if any threat's coming. As they often tell us, as science does too, that Earth is to be hit. Yes, it's concluded. This is confirmed in millions of years. So if that means it's only going to be in millions of years, how does an asteroid appear on January 9th or uh, June 2017? Or is it end of May? Another one buzzed by, whizzed by very close to Earth. How do they appear? How can we not see these objects if they're that massive too and they're going by? You know, it doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean? How can an asteroid whiz by the moon and Earth when we have hundreds if not thousands of telescopes and astronomers, both professional and uh, amateur, looking at the sky for objects. I found an object and by taking deep space photos of the sky for an hour or two, I mean I'll snapshot all around the moon for hours it's black photos. When I get back, each black photo, completely black, I have to enhance them. But out of my 75 to often 100 photos in, the, in an hour or two period from taking photos, I can get 16 or 17 of the photos that were the ones taken around the same time out of the 100 photos, like one after the other, I could see a moving object in the sky by enhance, enhancing each photo. It's very long to do, quite the long process, but it is showing us uh, virtual reality that there is, there are asteroids out there more than people think. And yes, yes, they are whizzing uh, inside of Earth's atmosphere by overhead without us seeing it. Here's another object, very reflective on the surface, and it looks like only a small object, but in reality, in reality, it's a lot bigger than we think, and there's a bottom to it also, but not very reflective, and it's probably about double the size that you're seeing with the light here. There's a smaller light on the bottom, fascinating, a very, very bright light on the bottom of this uh, celestial unknown object, whether it be an asteroid or something. This plane, guys, it's a military plane, and two jets at the beginning of uh, June. I've never seen any military crafts, not this much, and not these kinds around here. This is most likely Canadian. Uh, it was military camo, a camouflaged uh, paint job on it, but I could not see any numbers or anything. Look how fast it was going, because when I backed out with three fighter jets guys in formation, okay, they were they were going with this guy coming up not long after it. And you'll see as I zoom out, I only got a chance to get an overhead shot of it and the six motors on it, six propellers turning there. Most likely a bomber. It looks like there's something on his tummy there. And there it is. I'll zoom back out. Already after about seven or eight seconds, it was over Ontario past Cornwall in a flash of an eye. My brother Richard, once again. Richard McPhee, $15 donation, third time donor, three donations for a total of $45. Love you, man. Thanks. Love from Canada. We're going to get that big mama telescope, I guarantee it. And thanks to you, man, and everyone. I mean, this is amazing getting contributions. We're actually a closed group. We're actually like a reserved small group that are going to show ourselves what is out there just boom just like that and those who want to con contribute also can check the link in the description of this video i thank you for the support